when I eat clean during the day, I'm going to be able to get my works out, which is going to give me energy to give these videos out to you and the articles and all the stuff that I need to do. But I let it fall apart at night when I'm done my work, which has been an, it's a constant struggle for me. So some, sometimes I'll get like, you know, six or seven months in a row where I'm doing great. And then, you know, it'll be the nighttime will fall apart. But during the day, I got that hand. Okay. That's very important. Uh, eating in moderation to even out your blood sugar. Very important. Again, I do that really well during the day. I do intermittent fasting till noon. And then I have some chicken and rice, have some more chicken and rice later in the afternoon. I'm telling you, if you, if you want to fuck up your mood and fuck up your blood sugar, start the day off with a bunch of cake, you know, eat, eat half of one of those big red velvet cakes. Say good, say good night to the next five hours of four hours of your day. You're going to have to go back to sleep. You're going to have to go lie down on the bed and just feel horrible because you knocked your blood sugar so high. Uh, the same goes from, um, not eating for too long. I do intermittent fasting till noon, but if I push that till four or five, and I keep taking in stims like caffeine, I'm, I'm going to start to feel nauseous, going to start to feel a little bit shaky because now my blood sugar is too low. Okay, so those are things you need to, to take into consideration. Um, the, the third best slow state change is no porn, masturbation, or orgasm for as long as possible. Uh, doubly important if you combine it with that slow tantric bonding sex, you're going to feel incredible. My record for no PMO is eight months. Um, no coincidence, it was the most productive eight months of my life, hands down. Um, I felt, by the end of it, I felt like just a machine. My eye contact was like, I would just look through you like some kind of a savage. Uh, but keep in mind, I still was having sex. Uh, it was just that, that tantric style, non-ejaculatory sex. And by the way, that makes sex absolutely incredible. And uh, your girlfriend definitely won't mind because you're you're able to just go indefinitely. If you want to see that, definitely check those videos out. And the fourth thing is waking up early. Okay, set my alarm for six every day. I got hip hop blasting on on my um, smartphone to get me up early. And this is a real thing. Circadian rhythm is a real thing. It sounds like it sounds like some woo woo hippie stuff, and I would have thought so if I hadn't tested it out a million times. I wish I could stay up till two o'clock every night and I wish I could go out and drink every night and I wish I could sleep in till 11. But guess what? You feel way better when you wake up at six than you do when you wake up at 10. And you feel better when you wake up at 10 than you do. When you wake up at two, you're going to feel groggy in the afternoon. You're going to feel groggy all day. You're, you're never going to have the right energy. If you wake up at 10, you feel better than you wake up at two. If you wake up at eight, you're going to feel better than you wake up at 10. But if you wake up at six, that's the perfect time. That's like the peak uh, testosterone. Like your body is produces different chemicals at different times of the day. Peak testosterone, I think, is six or 630. Um, you're getting up with the sunrise, which is what we are evolved to do. And it makes a massive, massive difference. It really does. Um, I wish I didn't have to set my alarm early every day, but I know that that's what I have to do to be able to stay on top of my game and and, and take care of business and and mental, feel good in my mental state, okay? So those are the best quick state changes. Those are the best slow state changes. Now I'm gonna give you the best way to fuck up your mental state and get yourself into lots of negative, uh, intrusive, depressive, and all kinds of nasty thoughts. Uh, eat garbage, excellent way to feel sick and sore and um, have inflamed joints and feel mentally unstable. And uh, while you're eating garbage, definitely make sure to eat lots of sugar and for, for in small periods of time and then go long periods of time without eating so that your blood sugar is all over the map. Uh, eat lots of processed foods. Don't take your vitamins. Don't eat vegetables and walk around with terrible posture so that you're hunched over your computer all the time and that your back is always gonna hurt. Uh, sit a lot so that your body, so that you don't have proper blood flow and that so your hamstrings get really tight and your lower back starts to hurt. And don't exercise and make sure that you um, stay around people who are sick so you can get lots of colds. Don't get enough sleep so that you are not properly rested and basically like the average person's life, okay? The average stressed out 
person working a job where you're around a bunch of coworkers who have sick children and they're coughing on you and you're eating garbage because you hate your job. So you go to Wendy's for lunch or you're, or you're just trying to get through the day. So whatever you have for lunch is like your only high point. Again, you're not evolved to sit in front of fluorescent lights and work a terrible job. If you want to see how to get out of that, you know, check out my article on video and start on how to start a service-based business. Check out my article video on 11 reasons why you shouldn't work a job. Again, we're not evolved for the modern lifestyle whatsoever, okay? So you really, I, your ideal lifestyle is you want to be able to recreate sort of the lifestyle that we're evolved for, which is being able to be outside a lot, um, being able to eat clean, being able to get consistent exercise, being able to get good drinking water, being able to live and get natural sunlight, um, taking vitamins and supplements to, to fill in whatever deficiencies deficiencies we might have, uh, not relying on, um, you know, the internet for your only source of entertainment, you know, having social skills and being around people, you know, like on a physical level, you're a human. Okay. Um, the, and the more you fight that biology, the worse you're going to feel on a mental level. I mean, I don't think that the amount of anxiety and the amount of depression we have is, is an accident in the modern world. It's because we're not living in accordance with our biology. And the more you live in accordance with your biology from diet to exercise, you're better, the better you'll feel. Okay. It's like when I was younger, I dreamed that one day I'd, I'd have total control over my mind. I'd be like, I'm going to be able to do anything. I'm going to be able to eat anything I want. I'm going to be able to do drugs. And but my mind's going to be so strong that I'm just going to be able to control it all. I'm just going to have it all through my willpower. Like I've always had strong willpower. And I was like, man, I'm just going to be able to control everything through my willpower so that I'm able to do what I want at any given time. And like, if I'm feeling sick, I'll just be able to use my mind control to just will that out of me. Guess what didn't happen? Okay. That there's many schools of thought from, from NLP, which has a lot of good stuff to, you know, magic spelled with a K, you know, talking about the belief and and control and the ability of your mind and there's you know interesting techniques from there but when you read about a lot of these magicians right guys like Aleister Crowley they end up old fat drug addicts because they thought that like oh I can just do anything but I have this strong mental power this is not the reality The, the reality that took me a long time to accept was that you're much more human than you think you are a physical animal you're a mammal you are your physical body is your carrier through this life, okay? And you are much, much, much more human than you think. Um, you know, positive thinking is an incredible tool, but if you drop, if even a, a small drop or spike in your blood sugar will throw your mood out of balance. Like if I go to the supermarket right now and I get one of those beautiful red velvet cream cheese cupcakes, man, and I, I eat that on top of my chicken and rice, boom. Next hour, I'm done. I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there in a food in a in a food coma, right? No matter how much positive thinking and all the things that I have going for me, like that little little cupcake, takes me out for the next hour, right? And those reverberations, I'm going to feel for the next three hours because now I lost my positive physical momentum, right? And then I'm going to be sitting there, and I'm going to be, you know, my mental state's going to be a lot worse. Okay, so in reality, you're way more human than you think. And something as small as a common cold will drop your your mental state by as much as 20%, even if you're excellent as positive thinking. So if you really want to have good thoughts, if you want to um, be, be able to continue with positive thinking, and and I'm a huge fan of positive thinking, reframing, you know, check out my article on how to reframe negative thoughts this is all super important. But can't neglect the physical. You really got to focus on on controlling the physical as much, if not more, than the mental state, because you are, and you know, you know, you are an animal. You are a human. You are a mammal. Okay, and you have to act accordingly in in accordance with your biology and take care of your physical state, because you only have one body, right? That's going to carry you through life.